Hello and welcome back to Elden Ring The Ultimate Guide Part 11. Today it is Northern Lyurnia, that little bit well, the frenzy. If this is the first time you've watched any of these videos, then I recommend you watch the video linked in the description. And if you have any tips you don't put them in tips, comment. But for now, we are warping back to Tur Turtle Pope, uh, because we are going to get Lightning Armament. I think that's what it's called anyway. And um, Electrify Armament. Never mind. Now, essentially the reason for that is the Black Rider enemies are weak to electricity damage, so that is what we're going to use uh, instead of um, Sacred Blade. And here we are, we have Irina again. Or Hieta, actually. Yeah, so Hieta's quest is the... As you've seen if you've watched the previous parts, it spans the entirety of Leonia. And this is the last location she will appear in here. Um, we need to grab another item for her. It's called the Fingerprint Grape. And we'll get it at the end of this area. Come back and give it to her. And then from there, her quest is done until you're in the Royal Capital. Aye. So we are going to just head to the... I guess it's a bit of a ruined road. And now we are going to this blue gate here. And effectively that can let you into Rhea Lucaria, I'm sure. That is one entrance of it. But we are not going to go there just now. Um, because we do have the glintstone key, but irrelevant. Uh, so we can talk to Melina just now. Um, again, that's just like a story thing. Um, we will do it because the prompt is there, but otherwise, just you know, you can absorb the story in your own time. But otherwise, we need to make it night time to fight the Black Rider, and we've put electrify armament on already. Uh, and then Bok is here as well. Now, I don't think this has anything to do with Bok's actual quest. There's, he's just here and can alter your garments, but otherwise that's it. Uh, you don't need to talk to him or anything there. Um, I, don't, I don't think so anyway. Talk to him just in case, but I don't, I don't think that has anything to do with this quest. No, you are right. You don't need to talk to him there. You also don't need to talk to him on the Altus Plateau, which will be the next location you, uh, you will encounter him. The only time you need to talk to him from this point forward is at the entrance of the Royal Capital. So, we are putting on a Physic Flask, we put on Golden Vow, and we put on Electrify Armament. Now, now that I think about it, given that these guys, uh, I think I think they can be bled, I think, um, it might actually be worthwhile using Blood Flame Blade because of the, the tick damage over time, bleed damage that it does. That might be actually useful. But in terms of, like, single hit damage, Electrify Armament is going to do the most for, um, compared to everything else. That's still not a great it, amount of damage, but it's some. I guess it could be the difference maker um, in getting it to bleed, but I think you're better off in the case of this enemy in particular using something like Electrify Armament to make each hit do the most amount of damage, and then if you get a bleed, it's a bonus. Instead like, of making yeah, bleed your primary source of damage. 6 of 1, I get you can try it. If, if it's better for you, stick it in the comments. You can give it a go. Um, otherwise, I recommend that you actually just come back here and do this guy later once we have the proper setup for doing them. Because um, you don't you don't need to fight these guys right as they appear, but you can, and this is a way of doing it. So you keep your guard up, you let him do his attack, and then you attack after his attack. Do not get greedy. And for that, you get Giant Hunt and the Knight Rider Glaive. Actually, both very good. So I do want to talk a little bit about the Knight Rider Glaive. In particular, the Night Rider Glaive is one of my favourite weapons in the game. It's exceptionally good, especially on a heavy infusion. It scales, um, has S scaling in strength um, when heavy infused, making it great for any kind of strength build. Um, it can accept some really great Ashes of War, just like Giant Hunt that we also picked up there. Um, you can use Giant Hunt to absolutely clown on probably the hardest boss in the game. Um, and if I can find the footage for that, hopefully we'll be able to splice that into one of the videos a little later on and you'll get to see what i mean uh, but for now we're just picking up these two items here in front of where some trebuchets are shooting at you um both rune arcs and then we're going to take a little shortcut up to avoid all the the fire from the trebuchets to start grabbing the items in these little camps aye so we're just going to like run through i think most of the camps in the game we just run through um it's not really worth because you just get absolutely swarmed by enemies when you do it, so it's just not really worth it, I don't think. Uh, God, I can't more than this. A uh, mace? Great mace. Some... I'm so good, what can I say? <laughs> so now we're heading up to the Grand Lifted Dectus, 
I think. I think this is decked. It's not rolled. But, um... Yeah, so this leads to Altus Plateau. There's two different ways to get into Altus Plateau. Um, and, uh... Yeah, this is one of them. Uh... So, as a result of the fact that you get one of the deck, you get the Dectus Medallion Half from uh, Albus. Uh, so, oh, there's also a, uh, a Scarab here. Uh, so, we're going to cut that open. Get a Smith and Stone 3, Somber. And, uh, but the reason, so we get a Dectus Half Medallion from Albus, but then we also get one in Caelid. And I think a lot of people think that Caelid is actually to be done either at, like, after all this, but I think given that, uh, segment of the of the medallion is in Caelid. It does imply that you should do Caelid before. Altless of which we are going to be doing that. So there's a grace here and um, I, well to be fair we do both versions of getting up to Altless so we can show you both. But for now definitely don't go to Altless uh, because you, you want to do Caelid before Altless and we'll explain why closer to the time. So speak to Melina and then again we're just, it's, it's, there's not a lot to talk about in this part honestly. It's uh just following the beaten path up to the Frenzy Flame bit, I guess. Alright, so Edit and Tony back here again, and I just want to talk about the enemy drops in this area, because it's not very complicated. So there's a commoner type enemy, which is basically just like the frenzied villagers that you see. They can just drop like glass shards, yellow embers, and eye of yellow, as well as the weathered straight sword. But I really wouldn't recommend farming for any of the drops that you can get in this area, in this area, because you can get them from everywhere else in much easier areas to farm because things aren't doing madness. So there's just like the normal selection of rail carrier soldiers and then there's like a cuckoo knight in this area and that's like kind of it to be honest. Again, you know, the rail carrier soldiers just drop whatever they're using as well as, you know, the foot soldiers as well, they do the same thing. But this isn't really the area that you want to be farming in anyway, but I should probably just mention it. I do just want to talk about the uh, Dexus uh, medallions, actually. Um, something nice that you can do, and this is um, owing to Elden Ring's open world design, is you can actually get both halves of the Dexus medallion without fighting anything. So you can come to Altus without actually taking out a boss, without picking up an item, except the Dexus medallion, obviously. Um, yeah, I guess that is true. It's nice that the world's so open and you can explore it that way if you so choose. So, heading up this bit of... Uh this bit of the, this hill, right, I guess. Um, we want, we're trying to hide behind the rocks because there's a big floating fire orb that gives uh, puts the frenzy stats effect on us when that... Uh, madness, rather. Not frenzy. It might as well be frenzy. So basically, um, once that bar reaches full, we get inflicted with madness and we take a big chunk of health and it pauses us like we can't move for a little while. So it's uh, it sucks, right? And... Um, Somebody said that you can use the Mimic Veil um, to stop that from happening. You can't. Uh, all it does is uh, lowers the range that the eye can deal deal madness to you. Uh, so we're currently looking for the um, the grace. It's like around here. I just was could not find my bearings. Uh, but there it is. So we're going to grab this grace and then we're going to take out the big eye thing, whatever you want to call it. Now this was the grace we could have accessed earlier if you saw the part where we took on the northern half of the east of leonia and i think yeah we're showing you the same thing again so you can jump on this little pillar here next to where you would have fought the um earth tree avatar and once you're on top of this you can just jump across straight to the plateau that has the frenzy flame village site of grace just outside of it so as you can see, now we're up this this slope here. Um, just over the crest of this hill will be the Grace. Um, and just in the distance will be the tower that we will be going to take out very, very shortly. Now, Aye. there's a few different ways you can do that. And we're going to show you one of them. But we discovered actually while we were testing the Mimic Veil thing that the bow could actually be really useful for this. Because you could, in theory, uh, turn the tower off at a distance with the bow without ever risking getting frenzied. Now, the thing is, is that it's not really that difficult, right? There's a bunch of these big rocks that are just falling to their side. All you need to do is just hide behind them um, and you won't take the the, fret, like the madness damage. Uh, so fuck it, right? Just hide behind the rocks, get on torrent. Like, this isn't difficult. We're kind of overthinking, like, oh, we need to find like an elaborate way of not 
taking madness damage. It just doesn't matter. To be honest, like, it just doesn't matter. Just run towards it and then get into the tower. Like, I fuck mean, it. ultimately, no, but it is fun to have these, uh, these methods that just involve you getting, getting here and clearing it without getting, you know, frenzied at all. That is true. Now, what you can do, though, is you can lob fire pots into the ceiling and take down... Basically, there's, like, a bunch of, like, four little dreglins or whatever, and they're, like, praying to this orb, kind of keeping it alive. Very much akin to uh, those guys in Demon Souls. So I think this is a, a reference to that, perhaps. But, yeah, you can just, like, kill them from below, and then that means you don't need to go up and then potentially get frenzied when you're on the top platform. So it means you can stay safe without taking Frenzy and uh, get rid of it that way. But once you kill all the dragons, I think there's four or five of them, the eye won't come back and they won't come, it won't come back ever, I don't think. So hi again, Edit and Tony here. That tower that you see in the back, that's the rise for this area. Now we don't have the stuff to do it yet, so we're going to come back to it. Just in case anybody's confused about why we just completely ignored a part of this area. Um, you get, does, no, does you're right. Once, okay, now cool, once cool. it's gone, it's gone. Cool. So, aye, that's uh, that's just how we're taking care of that. It's really not a big thing to overthink. Um, I can't remember what the what armor, like what stat it is that gives you extra madness resistance, but just stack for that. What what's the stat? I'm sure you know. Uh, that's a fucking good question. Um, fuck, I can't remember what it's called. Um, so yeah, from this grace, which you could just warp back to, I, again, I'm struggling to find it, from this grace, head southeast, and then you get out this little bit of, like, lower shelf area, I guess, and um, there's a few items here at these uh, chairs. Now, uh, these items can actually be a little bit of a pain in the ass, like, trying to pick, I mean, it's an eye of yellow, it literally just doesn't matter, but as a result, I kind of got a little bit swarmed, so just be careful. I think it's focus that helps focus. you resist madness. You know what? Let's just fucking. I think. You, you 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 keep talking. I'll just Google it in real time. All right, no worries. Um, so we're entering the Frenzy Flame Village here. You're gonna get one of the cookbooks for Frenzy Flame. I think there's only three of those in the game, and the next item you're gonna grab is Shabriri's Woe. Now, what the Shabriri's Woe talisman does is um, attracts the aggression of enemies easier. Um, so really, it's only for people who are interested in making the game harder. So generally, just don't use that talisman. It's not worth it. There uh, is jump uh, an interesting thing you can do with Shabriri's Woe, well, but uh, we'll talk about that once it becomes more relevant. Um, but yeah, indeed, it is focus. So you can just stack all your armor that gives you focus defense, and you'll be fine. Just check what you've got. If something has higher focus than what you're currently wearing, stick it on. Easy peasy. Now, don't get ganged up by the rats. Instead, do this, and uh, you're going to have a much easier time. <laughs> <laughs> Just Grabbing hit them with this... a tactical ass strike. Aye, uh... aye. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that was just for Eye of Yerlo. So, fucking epic. That was definitely worth dying for. Um, so, warping back to Bellum Highway which is the grace that I was struggling to fucking find. Um, we're going to head back into the village, and there's just a couple of little things left to do. Um, just ignore yeah, the enemies. I'm heading up irrelevant. to the top now. It's, uh, right. I think there's a mass grave and a church, and that's about it. Now, you might be wondering, since, the, uh, since clearing the tower wasn't really hard, and like we were talking about it sort of being kind of a non-issue, the madness, why it would be worth clearing it at all. And it's because if you're in this area, the tower can still see you. So it makes doing this part of the um, northern portion of Leonia a little bit harder. So we just made life easy for ourselves. Sure, um, yeah, because you, you don't want to be taking madness all the way over here. Um, no, especially not when it comes to doing this next bit, which is, as you can see, we were forced off of Torrent there, and that's because we're about to be invaded by uh, Festering Fingerprint Pike. Uh, indeed, yes. Um, yeah. No, I think we're running straight past him because there's a grace here, so if we just touch this grace, it means if he kills us, we'll just... Oh, no, there isn't a grace. Oh, no, there is a grace. Yeah, there is. 
So now it means if he kills us, we'll just spawn right back here so we don't need to go through the village or whatever again. But um, luckily for us, he is a normal guy, which means he is weak to our big fat bussy. So we are going to just be ground slamming him. And obviously he does an insane amount of madness damage. So uh, I guess just kind of watch out for that. Um, yeah. Um, you get a couple of cool madness items in this area, actually. So you get Vike's spear for defeating him. Um, Vike's war spear, it builds madness up on hit, which is pretty cool. And also it's Ash of War. What he just used there is the incantation that we picked up in the tower with the big eye of Sauron at the top of it. It's called Howl of Shabriri. It boosts your damage, but it also increases the amount of damage you take. Um, and the third one... Oh, we also picked up the... Fingerprint Grape, Finger, Finger Maiden Set, and a Sacred Tear, so we're no doubt going to spend that Sacred Tear right now. Then the Fingerprint Grape we will be taking to Hyetta um, in due time. But uh, yeah, the other item we picked up was from the Scarab, just below where we are now. And that is Frenzied Burst. Now, for anyone interested in using incantations, um, Frenzied Burst has insane range and like all the frenzy spells deals pure fire damage which means if something is weak to fire and far away and doesn't have any ranged attacks frenzied burst can kill it for you oh you heard it here first maybe oh no that's 100 percent certifiably true frenzied burst is insane <laughs> there are so many ways to boost its damage just please for the love of god if you're using incantations try that out because it's so fun so we're just at another uh, madness plant, by the way. What a bastard, right? Who designed that one? Miyazaki himself. Yeah, I know. And, and it's so dumb because it's like, literally, I'm getting madness twice for the sake of what? Like a fucking... Golden, golden Rune 3. Awesome shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's three. critical. Well remembered. Um, or well guessed, I guess. It's guessed. It's absolute yeah. guessed. Could have been anything. Um, no, it's absolutely critical for the build, bro. We needed that Golden Rune 3. We could not Aye. have finished the game without it. And now we are back at that bit that you can't get to that bit from. So now we're just heading back to here, and that's pretty much it for this episode. There's not a lot going on. So give As us I a said earlier, break. yeah, this is the last interaction we have with Hayata for a long, long time now. Yeah. She will just sort of disappear off the face of the earth, but that will be it for part 11. And okay, there we go. That's Northern Leonia. Done. Join us in part 12, where we're going to be doing Ainsel River. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter. You can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything. Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.